Five years ago, I preached a sermon asking where one's faith comes from. I knew that I believed in God from a young age, but I never understood why. My parents tried their best to raise a culturally Jewish non-believer, and yet here I stand in my second year of seminary, identifying as a Jewish UU theist, speaking to you from the pulpit of a church. While seminary is an expert partner at flipping around everything you thought you believed, this nagging connection to God has somehow persevered. From a surprisingly young age, I found myself humbled by a belief in something beyond what I could see. In the wake of my grandfather's death when I was seven, I began to pray to him nightly. He felt like a conversation partner, like he was looking down on me and was someone I could bring my questions and fears to. At some point that I no longer remember, my prayers to my grandfather shifted to prayers to God, who I was taught not to believe in. Prayer was something that fed my life. I found myself praying for safety when things felt dangerous and would whisper prayers of gratitude for being in the right place at the right time when witnessing a moment of the absolute splendor of nature. I couldn't intellectually explain my faith, but I knew deep within how it felt in my body. You may be wondering here today, why is she sharing this? Where does faith fit in our church? The common misconception about Unitarian Universalism is that we can believe whatever we want. Others argue that by virtue of us being a creedless tradition, we are actually a faithless one as well. James Luther Adams has been called the most influential 20th century Unitarian theologian. He was our modern theologian, the brilliant man who bridged the antiquated time of our revolutionary era Unitarianism with the mid 20th century, eventually leading us to the theology fundamental to our tradition at the time of the 1961 merger of Unitarianism and Universalism. In his essay, A Faith for the Free, James Luther Adams argued that there is no such thing as faithlessness, that to be human is to have faith. In the eyes of Adams, the question facing us as humans is not whether or not to be a person of faith, but rather in what should one have faith. For Adams, Faith did not inherently involve God, and it was not intrinsically moral. Writing in the year after World War II ended, Adams had witnessed the results of people being swayed by a faith in nationalism and militarism. Adams believed that one's faith could be determined by what a person focused on, or in his own words, by what they loved served, sacrificed for, tolerated, and fought against. As faith could be directed towards good or bad, humans had the responsibility to live with a good faith. The most important aspect of what Adams called a free faith was one's responsibility to understand and analyze one's personal beliefs. In his most famous quote, Adams shared that, quote, an unexamined faith is not worth having. While many concepts of faithfulness involved the, involved the assumed reality of God, this does not need to be the case. My life experiences have granted me a belief in God, but I truly believe that in a different lifetime, my inherent faith could have just as easily been grounded in natural phenomena, in an awe of nature, 
rather than the spirit, or perhaps somewhere in between. As Reverend Kendall Gibbons stated in her 2012 essay, Primal Reverence, of which you just heard a part, quote, the primal experience of reverence in and for the natural world precedes theology of any variety. It is an organic human experience that requires no supernatural explanations. For Reverend Gibbons, the purest demonstration of faith was the act of reverence. One could be reverent towards nature or moved into reverence from heroic stories of selfless acts. Gibbons wrote about the humility she felt standing at a waterfall of gazing at its immense power and unbelievable beauty. As she said, the waterfalls, quote, make me want to weep, want to dance, want to fall on my knees and be one with whatever that is in everlasting praise. So in considering Reverend Gibbon's moments of primal reverence, I wonder today, what are the moments in life that took your breath away? What experiences have you had that moved beyond words, that transcended the explainable? How does it feel to sit with these memories now? We can all find benefit in giving in to the mystery and wonder of life. Theist, non, or somewhere in between, the most powerful moments in our lives might be the most difficult to explain. Over 16 years ago, I was searching to figure out my place in this world, my purpose, my reason for being. In a moment of unprecedented clarity, I felt myself called into a life of service. At this time, my childhood prayer practice was starting to wane, and I was no longer sure what I believed. One week later, at the tail end of a 12 and a half hour drive home from college, I lost focus and began to 360 across the New York State Thruway. Somehow, unlike the previous 570 miles of my journey, there were no other cars in my immediate vicinity. When all was said and done, I'd hit both the left and right guardrails of this four-lane highway, shattered the windows of my car, and deposited my rear bumper about a half mile back from where I skidded to a stop on the left shoulder. Other concerned drivers pulled off, 911 was called, and I shakily left my smoking car. That night was a blur of emotions and adrenaline, but somehow as the police and my parents arrived, I knew I was okay enough to decline their offer for an ambulance. The next morning, I woke up in my childhood bedroom, the same place where I had first fallen into prayer, and I was struck by a thought. I realized I had emerged from my totaled car without even a scratch or a bruise on my body. For reasons I could not understand and that I still struggle to fully comprehend all these years later, it was completely clear to me, without a doubt in my mind, that I had been spared. Not only that, but that all of the other drivers on the road with me were kept safe as well. My waning childhood faith in God came roaring back like a tidal wave. My questions over my life's purpose just a week before started to come into a new focus. I felt I had been given a second chance at life and my belief in something unexplainable 
started to be transcribed onto my heart. This is my story, but it is just one of millions of stories of a discovery of what exactly one's faith is pointing to. For me, faith in a higher power and a desire to serve others has been the driving force in my life. For Reverend Gibbons, her faith became reverence in the natural world, and it gives her grounding and purpose. What could change if you consider the natural moments that take your breath away as a moment of praise? As Unitarian Universalists, we need not be afraid to be people of faith. It is not necessary to believe in God or in any higher power in order to have faith. I truly believe that connecting to these moments of personal faith, whether it be through the divine or through nature or through the face of an infant who just learned how to smile, will only make our tradition stronger. As Adam said, it is not possible to have a faithless life, just a life lived with an unexamined faith. So I ask you today, what is your faith? What do you love, serve, and sacrifice for? What do you tolerate? What do you fight against? As you think of these driving forces in your life, how does it feel to consider them as elements of faith? Amen and blessed be. Hi, I'm Reverend Hannah Capaldi. And I'm Reverend Abby Tennis. We are the ministers at the First Unitarian Church of Philadelphia, where our mission is to awaken love and justice in our lives and in the world. We're so grateful that you watched, and we hope that the sermon connected with your soul. We also want to invite you to join us for a live worship service every Sunday at 11 a.m. Eastern Time. You can always find the link to that service on our website at www.philauu.org. In these services, you'll hear words like you've just heard, and you also get a chance to greet one another, pray together, sing together, and we even hold a virtual coffee hour after services to get a chance to greet some new and old friends. If you want to support the mission of this community and you feel moved to give, you can do so by going to the website that Reverend Abby just mentioned. You can find that link below, or you can text 215-709-709. 5095 and follow the prompts to give. If someone in your life needs to hear these words today, we encourage you to share this video. And again, thank you so much for watching. We hope to see you soon.